hits this one, goes. Oh! And that is why you don't do that, people. Probably should turn the power off. What's up, guys? So we're back at the house. Um, nothing's changed, uh, which, you know, considering the condition of the house, I, it's a pretty good thing. Nothing's fallen or, or moved or shifted too much that I that I can notice. So that's always a good thing. Um, <clears throat> we're here. Today's uh, goal or project, I guess, if you will, uh, considering that we don't have a floor yet, um, is to finish demoing these walls. So I wasn't initially really thinking I would go so far as to take out uh, the sheetrock and the boards on these other walls, but considering uh, where we're at and the surprises we've found uh, and some of the reframing that we probably will have to do, uh, I'm going to take out the rest of it, see where we're at, and uh, and have to go from there. Uh, I think that's probably the best, the smartest move at this point. Uh, if you've been following along or, or if you haven't, uh, I'll try to link a playlist uh, up here for you to go catch up on some of the videos. Uh, and you'll better understand why there's just gravel in here and there's no floor. Mistake on my part, I suppose. Um, so we're working on getting that in uh, in the future, but not today. Probably not anytime super soon. Um, I keep wanting to pour this little footer, uh, which I can. Um, but it's, <clears throat> it's 9 degrees right now. And so I'm not, not in the mood to pour concrete in 9 degrees. Um, it's, it's possible, it's doable. I've got some insulation that I could throw around it to keep it warm while it hardens. Concrete creates its own heat as it, as the chemical reaction and everything happens and it hardens. So it's possible to do it. I've just, I'm going to wait for a little bit of a warmer day so that my chances of it working and setting up well is, is a little bit higher. So, so I'm going to wait on that for another couple of days. It's supposed to be nicer, uh, this weekend, I think sometime. <clears throat> so we'll see if we can get that in, but so today's uh, hopefully the last, at least the last major demo day. So that'll be uh, that'll be good. That'll be a, a new milestone that I'm energized on some level to actually uh, to actually obtain. So. So I gotta learn better where to put my garbage because I really keep putting it in one spot and then having to move it all and then having to move it all. So I have to, uh, have to do better at that because I don't want to have to move things a hundred times. Just 50, that works, right? Look at this pristine mud job somebody did. Oh, that's quality. That's quality. Interesting idea, I think. Person trim. It's about what the floor looks like, I think, before I tore that up. This whole place is done in these foot and a half inch strips. This foot and a half inch strips. Ridiculous.
Okay, maybe you guys can help me with something. These were all upstairs as well. I have a theory on what they are, uh, but I don't fully know. So there's these little strips there. Maybe they're really maybe a half inch wide by an inch thick or so, a little over an inch. Um, stuck to the outside of the wall. Now upstairs there was no insulation, so they were put there without any insulation. I assume. So I don't know really what their purpose is exactly. My thought, my thought, is with these old houses, there isn't much of a water vapor barrier on the outside. So there's no like Tyvek house wrap that you would put on most new construction today. So my thought is to, I mean, one, old houses uh, didn't really have insulation. So you didn't have to worry about moisture uh, getting into the insulation and causing mold issues. Uh, however, so you didn't have to have worry so much about mold issues because as the heat came and whatever, um, it would all dry out. And so <clears throat> a lot of these old houses that were built so long ago uh, don't have so much rot because they don't have moisture problems in the walls or whatever because they can air out because there's no insulation. And so what can become a negative, no insulation can also, I guess, become some kind of positive. However, you throw in insulation in an old house and it can get wet and moldy if it's not done well and not done right. So I don't know why these are original to the house um, and if they technically are. So you tell me what you think of what their purpose is. My thought was maybe if when installation is put in, they cause a, a gap here. I don't know if you can see that. <clears throat> they cause a gap between the exterior wall and the insulation so that any moisture that might get in can dry out and uh, so preventing mold, preventing water issues. I don't really know. You tell me what you think in the comments uh, or tell me if you've seen it before. Um, Cause that's that's really my, my only thought, my only conclusion. Although again, I don't know if they're like, I'll say this, up, there were a bunch of them upstairs, just the same as this, but there's was never any insulation installed upstairs. I don't think ever, so. Why would they be there if nobody was putting in insulation anyway? All right, so it's time for the big reveal. So this that you see up here is the beam that runs across the house. And of course, it needs to be supported, right? Something needs to be holding the beam up so that the house can be held up by the beam. Um, you see this two by six here that's got a couple small lags in it. Um, that I think is what is holding it up. And that is not, uh, in my estimation, how you're supposed to do it, nor I think any real inspector or construction worker uh, would think that that's a good way to do it. Especially if you've pulled these walls apart before to put insulation in, to go back and do that. I don't know if it was like, maybe they forgot or I don't know, it baffles me. So we'll see what's really behind it. See if there's anything supporting it. See what's going on with the studs that I assume that it's on.
Okay, well, you can see my suspicion was right. <coughs> There's no stud pack here supporting it. So there's no stud pack here uh, supporting the beam uh, down to the foundation. It is merely supported by this two by six, which is lagged into this stud and this stud. Uh, that's all you have for, what are those called? Bolts, lag nuts, lag screws. Uh, those are pretty small for what it is likely holding or should hold. Those are pretty small. And then this side, <coughs> you can see, you got one here, and you can actually see the bolt there. So that's not really actually holding onto this very well. You see two more. Uh, neither of them are in all the way. And, I don't know how this will look, but if you line it up to where the stud is, these are angled. So, as you look underneath, you can actually you can actually see the screw, one of them at least, right there. Uh, almost missing the stud entirely. So one of these, I don't really know which one, is missing entire the stud entirely. The second one is I can't feel, so it must be in there. But the one it missed almost is connected to this black power cord, electrical cord. Thankfully, it's not. This one's barely grasping onto anything here because you can actually, again, see the bolt coming through. So this is the best screw, or whatever you want to call them, lag screws. That one's not in all the way. These aren't in all the way, plus one's missing. I'm surprised this whole thing is actually still setting here at all. So I'm trying to be careful now because this and these electrical boxes down here that I don't think you can see uh, actually do have power to them. So. Found a pretty, pretty big hairy no-no. That is, like it's one thing for it to, let me show you. It's one thing for wires to be connected in a box in a wall. Like you're not supposed to do that. I get that. Like, don't do that. That's bad. This, this is just stupid. This, this is just stupid. I don't even, and maybe they don't have power to them. I can go to my tester and check, but look. This goes, power runs through this wire to this box, hits the box. I don't know where that goes. It's the power box, goes up to the light switches. Okay, whatever. Light switches, fine. Hits this one, goes. Oh! And that is why you don't do that, people. Probably should turn the power off. For the record, I'm not dead. 
However, I probably should have turned the power off as soon as I saw something wrong. Or maybe just have it off in general when you're tearing things apart. So I'm gonna do that now. That's the main breaker. <clears throat> so technically there's still power to the box uh, from the line coming in from the pole, but from the box, there's nothing being pushed out, so. So continuing our fun excursion on wiring now that it's off. And it's off and we won't die, hopefully. We see that this wire goes up. Power comes in, power goes to the light switches. That's fine. Uh, power goes through here, through the wall, up here, up. And I think that feeds part of the upstairs. Look, look, look. So that feeds the upstairs from this outlet, part of the upstairs at least. Then this line, which has been taped, gets to here. They didn't have quite enough to get to here, to get to this outlet, which... Oh look, it's not what you think. We probably would have died again. So this goes back up and over to what I could only assume is that guy. This guy, I don't know if he was pulled out or what, but this guy doesn't have power, hasn't had power. And he feeds this outlet, which feeds, you guessed it, upstairs. So we take a gander over here. We see more cut power lines that were just in the wall. We see the main feed, which I'm going to assume comes right off, goes down and over, hits this, which actually feds, feeds that outlet, that outlet, that outlet, that go upstairs. Guys, electrical here is a disaster. <laughs> and I'm no electrician. <laughs> Say that about everything. I'm no framer, but I can tell you that beam is in wrong. I'm no electrician, but I know that's stupid. As we have just learned, I'm not an electrician either, so I don't do the smartest things. Again, as we just learned, but come on. Come on. Perhaps the most surprising wall yet. <laughs>
Well, there you go. It's all taken care of, all demoed out, all the insulation thrown in a heap. Again, don't forget to, uh, in the comments below, let me know what you think these are, because I still, still don't really know what their purpose is. But uh, yeah, there's our insulation, our boards, a little more insulation, some other stuff. My next goal is to borrow a, a tr My next goal is to, to borrow a truck to get all this stuff out here, out of here. And then hopefully by next week, I'll have that pad poured. And then like the following week, I could put in the post and take out the scaffolding stuff that's there. And then we'll see what's after that. I really could move on. My thought is move on to electrical and plumbing since I can do those without a floor. Um, however, I have some thoughts for what I want to do do with framing and so part of that is kind of reframing putting an extra wall in on the inside so I don't know how that's gonna work with just haven't thought all the way through that stuff yet but <clears throat> I do have some good news though uh, I do have a couple uh, leads on some possible stone so I'm gonna try to chase that down here this next week or two and see what I can find for stone um, and maybe get the rest of this in so that we could get, get closer to, uh, pouring the floor and, and moving on with our lives. That would be cool. That would be great. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you haven't, uh, follow along. If you're new here, welcome. Really excited. Really glad you're uh, watching, uh, check out, uh, the playlist. Uh, and so you can catch yourself up to speed. That would be great. Uh, thanks again for watching. Have a good one.